This week's tip addresses a simple question. Which of these three sleeves do we use when swaging our cable connection? Some builders choose the wrong sleeve and sometimes we don't even know why we choose the sleeve we should. Let's take a look. Nearly every aircraft utilizes steel cables to operate control surfaces like the rudder, elevator, and ailerons. As a builder, you are going to need to attach these cables by way of swaging fittings on the ends to look like this, and you need to utilize the proper components to make these connections secure and safe. Here are the parts we use, the cable, the sleeve, and a thimble. The sleeve then gets swage to compress them onto the cable. The question we need to raise is this, which type of sleeve do you use? The copper ones or the silver ones? And by the way, they are all copper metal underneath any platings that you see. Does the choice matter? Because of the critical safety nature of this connection, it does matter. Any slippage of the cable at this connection can lead to possible loss of aircraft control. The sleeve material must not only grip the cable securely, it must also not corrode against the cable as we are dealing with dissimilar metals in a harsh environment. It is paramount that the proper components and procedures are followed if you are making these connections on your aircraft. You must use the correct sleeve so the connection does not slip or fail. The discussion in this presentation is for working with genuine Nycopress brand components. There are other manufacturers of these parts, and if using those, you need to follow their recommendations. In order to select the proper sleeve, we need to know whether you are using galvanized control cable or stainless steel control cable. Both types of cables are sold and used in experimental home-built aircraft. The cable you choose will determine which sleeve is appropriate to use. If using a galvanized cable, there are two choices of sleeves. The bare copper sleeves and the zinc plated copper sleeves. These are the only two sleeves to use with galvanized control cable. Your aircraft supply store should list them as bare copper and zinc plated. Given these two choices of sleeves, which do you pick? Which one is better? The answer is that it does not matter. This is purely a cosmetic choice. The zinc plating may hide weather-induced corrosion that can appear on the copper. There is no difference in the holding strength or durability. If using stainless steel cable, the only sleeve allowed is the tin-plated copper sleeve. Note that while this sleeve looks a lot like the zinc-plated copper sleeve, they are not the same. The copper alloy used in the tin-plated sleeve is different and designed for use on the stainless steel cable. There is also a sleeve made of stainless steel that is acceptable here. However, that sleeve requires a different swaging tool, so we are not considering its use in these examples. These are the only choices for selecting the proper Nycopress sleeves for aircraft control cables. Just that simple. Now here's something to think about. Some of the major aircraft supply stores have incorrect information on their websites regarding which sleeves go with which cables. 
so be careful when ordering. The information I'm supplying here is from the manufacturer, in this case Nycopress. On their website is complete information about which parts go with which cables. You can even obtain their material data sheet which shows all the information necessary and what tools to use. I even communicated with the director of engineering just to back up the information I was providing here. Also you may be familiar with this book AC 4313. This is what the FAA says on how mechanics are to work on certified aircraft and a good idea for us in the home built arena to follow it too. However there is some information regarding sleeves and control cable assemblies that are also in conflict with what I have shown here. I bring this to your attention because we often forget the very first sentence in this advisory circular where it shows that it only applies when there are no manufacture repair or maintenance instructions available. This is the blanket warning about using data from this aging book as it only applies in the absence of the most recent manufacturer information. So in our case we do have manufacturer instructions and the charts in 4313 would not apply in this specific case. In a future tip, we'll open up another can of worms when we talk about stainless steel versus galvanized control cables. Which should you use? Until then, you know the routine. Back to building.